hi everybody and welcome back to my channel um this week we're gonna be discussing how i practice self-care this is my mic maybe <laughs> all right didn't even ask me what i wanted you make them assumptions clearly not your forte clearly don't one of the ways that i practice self-care is by planning ahead so if i have any activities any things that I'm responsible for, any things that I know that's gonna be due in the next coming weeks, I like to plan ahead. So I'm a procrastinator, but what I do is um, wait till the last minute to get something done. So when most of my schoolwork is due at 1 a.m., I will start typing at 9 p.m. Now, because I get A's, I tend to <laughs> do it over and over again and not learn from my mistakes however that leads to anxiety so what I try to do now is to plan ahead to not stress myself out because instead of staying up late trying to finish um, a last minute project if I do a little bit of piece by piece then I notice that I'm not as overwhelmed so then I can get the stuff done earlier so if I know that I need to do laundry, I need to clean the house, I need to do homework assignments, I need to do something with my kids. Instead of me waiting till like the last minute and then either not actually doing it and then feeling overwhelmed or feeling bad for not finishing a task, what I'll actually do is I will just do the laundry a little bit earlier. So let's say if the weekend is coming up, I may do my laundry every Wednesday night. I may clean the like some rooms on Thursday, some rooms on Friday. And then when the weekend comes, I actually have the weekend to myself or I'll dedicate a Saturday morning to my school assignments or things like that, like based on what my schedule looks like. So I like to try to plan ahead. I do use a planner. I have a physical planner for my personal life and then I have a school planner. Um, I have an iPad. So one of the things that I plan on doing next year for 2023, I'm going to have a digital planner so I can have all of my things in one spot instead of me holding a work planner, a personal planner and a school calendar. So that's one of the things that I do to practice self-care. I, when, when I finish tasks ahead of schedule and I'm early, I realize that like that stress is lifted off, off of me and I feel a lot better about myself. I feel a lot better than my self-efficacy um, and I, you know, I achieve self-actualization so then I feel better. Another thing that I do to practice self-care is my hygiene. Like I'm very intentional about my hygiene. There's a lot of times when you just, you know, you get up, you brush your teeth, you take a shower, you, you throw some clothes on and you go about your day and you just, you know, you, that's your reg, reg, regular hygienic routine. But the same way that you would take care of a baby is how I take care of myself. So I'm very intentional about the lotions that I put on, the type of perfume that I choose to wear for the day. Like I have different scents. I have musky scents. I have vanilla scents. I have sweet scents. So depending on my mood, I will wear something that reflects how I feel for the day. I use body butters because I notice that makes my skin feel a lot softer. Now that I'm getting older and I have hormonal changes, like I need to shave my legs every day. I can't um, take the pain of laser removal. Like, like for me, it's, it's painful. But I could, I probably would do that. The haircut every two weeks. Dye my hair every two weeks because like now that I'm getting gray, so I bleach my hair. One of the other things that I do to practice self-care is being financially responsible. Now, when I was younger, I would just spend money like water. So now I'm a little bit more mindful with how I spend my money. Like I still have fun, but I try not to overextend myself. I don't have overdrafts in my account. I don't do anything that adds stress to my life. So I try to be mindful of how I spend my money, especially like when it comes to like frivolous things. So I budget like, so at the beginning of each month, I write a budget. I write out all of my bills. I write out what my income is going to be for the month because there's some aspects of my income that does fluctuate. So I write off all my expenses, write out all my income, and then I have um, some disposable cash that's left over. And then I allot for how I'm going to spend the disposable cash. So there are certain things that I like, like I like Starbucks, but of course we know like one trip to Starbucks is like nine, ten dollars And those tend to add up because if you go to Starbucks every day, that's $50 or it could add up easily to $100 a week, depending on how many times you go. So some of the things I've learned how to make for myself. 
so um there's a lot of recipes online that you can look up there's a lot of um iced coffee drinks you can look up how to make yourself you can you can buy yourself a pretty tumbler or you can buy yourself a starbucks tumbler that makes you feel better that you're drinking your coffee out of a starbucks cup and then that way um or whatever it is that whatever your your personal vice is like whatever it is um in order for you to save money so you're not overextending yourself now um every once in a while i will treat myself to the real thing but now it's not really like a necessity like i don't have to go to starbucks every day um i'm i don't eat out every day before like i would be lazy i guess like when it comes to just like meal prepping or packing my lunch bag now i just take the time in the nighttime now that I'm actually practicing um, effective time management that I'm planning my meals ahead. So like Sunday night, I'll probably prepare, um, nowadays I eat salads. So I'll prepare two salads. So for Monday and Tuesday, I have a salad. And then Tuesday night, you prepare yourself another two salads. Um, one of the things that I had to get accustomed to that I find helps me save money is not being afraid to eat the same thing over again like I used to be the person that hated leftovers now I realize like it's not really a bad thing and as you get older it's easier to eat the same thing because when you stop feeling well or if you start feeling sick it's easier to identify what is it that made you sick when you added something new into your diet I get my nails done so I just recently started getting my nails done again professionally before I would get at home manicure. So I had the UV light system, I had the drill bit, I had all the gel polishes and I would do my own manicures. And they were well, because for the time, like I had a goal. So I recently just paid off my car, which was a very big goal for me. And I'm very proud of myself. Um, but one of the ways I was able to pay off my car early was by not getting my nails done. So my nails cost about $120, $130 every month. And um, by doing my own at-home manicures, it was able, I was able to recoup that money and save that money and put that car towards my car note. So I was able to pay off my car note early. So now that I finished that goal and I accomplished that goal, I am now um, getting my nails done again. That's something that makes me feel better because in, when it comes to my upkeep, I don't really I don't go to the hair salon. Um, I don't get pedicures anymore um, because um, like I just. I don't like how, um, like nowadays it doesn't seem like they take that, that, that care that they used to with pedicures. It seems very rushed. Like, so it doesn't feel like a spa like experience anymore. So if I'm going to be spending 50, $60 on a pedicure, like I, I need to feel like I'm actually enjoying myself and it's relaxing and I'm not getting that anymore. So instead of me spending that $50 on a pedicure, like I, I rather just do my pedicure myself and I put that towards a, like a monthly massage or a monthly facial. Another way that I practice self-care is by taking myself out to um, nice places to eat. I, I, I like a good meal. Like I like a good steak. I like a good lamb chop. Um, I, I, I just I just like I like going out to eat. I just like the entire experience of fine dining. So that's something that I do. I take myself out to eat. Another way to practice self-care is just like, you know, when you look good, you, you feel good. And that's actually something that's true. So I, I put a lot of effort well i wouldn't say a lot of effort but i put more effort into my appearance um, i make sure that i'm like i'm wearing things that uplift my mood so red is a color that picks up my spirit orange is another color that makes me feel great lime green bright tropical colors I'm a, I'm a girl from the caribbean so i love bright tropical colors so that's something that i do that makes me feel good when i feel overwhelmed i also give myself grace and I don't beat myself up. So I don't say mean things to myself. So I say nice things to myself to make me feel good. So I journal, I plan ahead, I um, spend some time with myself. I, I try to be introspective, just spend time with myself off the phone, not on Instagram. I take social media breaks because a lot of the times, like, you know, we are processing a lot of information that we're seeing and you don't know, realize that, you know, we are absorbing a lot of the messages that that's coming down our timeline so i've recently one of the things that i've did is curate my feed to only see positive things so i stopped following pages like the shade room spiritual word justin the boy like i don't follow those pages anymore because as funny as some of the things on there are like i just feel like some of the things are a little bit negative and a little too toxic 
In the same way that I wouldn't want to be around a gossipy friend is, is, is the same thing as seeing those things and absorbing it, those things on a daily basis. So I take social media breaks as necessary. And recently I've curated my social media pages to only reflect positive things. Another way that I practice self-care is by going to therapy. Like whenever I feel that I need to talk to someone, I will schedule an appointment with a therapist. And um, my therapist and I have a really good rapport. Like I found someone that I really like. And one of the things that I like about my therapist is that she um, sees me as needed. So if let's say that I've grown and there's not a need for me to see her every two weeks or, or every week, like she lets me know that and I can call her up as needed if I feel like I'm going through something traumatic or hard in the moment I need to work through it, we, we do that together. So therapy is, you know, is, is a tool that's available for you to just talk out certain things, work it out, like by not like relying on the objective party just to help you get through it. And you don't always have to um, feel like something is wrong to go to therapy. Sometimes you could just go to therapy just to talk out things that you're not sure of and just have a sound and board. Another way that I practice self-care is by using my PTO. Like at work, part of the benefits is your paid time off. And a lot of us feel like we have to work, 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 and we never take time for ourselves. You go ahead and use your PTO. That's what it's there for. I take mental health days. I just take a, a, a day because I need it. Um, it. Like I take days just to do anything. I take days to just sit in the house and just decompress. Sometimes we get so overwhelmed with just life and society, especially these last couple of years. We've been through so much. We've been through the pandemic. We've been through food shortages. Now we're going through inflation. We're going through a potential uh possible war like there's just so many things that's just like going on in the world like we're living through history and it's really tough so just to, like we just we just need to do things that's lighter on us so i tend to go for things that's lighter on me whether it's instacart in my groceries well or or picking up the groceries from the from the pickup so you don't have to walk around the, the shopping center taking some time off to read a book or journal or just sit in complete silence. Those are the things that I do just to make myself feel better. It's, um, it's, it's, it's nothing. I don't really, I don't really do anything like extravagant before I used to like cope by going shopping and things like that. But I don't, I don't do those things anymore. But those are just like a few things that I do to practice self-care. They make me feel better. It's just little things. It's not that big. It does make a difference in my life. And um, I feel a lot better for it. So why don't you tell me down below some of the things you do to practice self-care. And maybe I could add it to my routine. Bye. Any